Yeah, it's your boy AG, Corner Man Boxing. Here live tonight with my man Big O, Coach Otha Jones out of Soul City Boxing Gym. I mean, one of the greatest teachers in the game, a real master of the sport. How you doing tonight, Pops? Hey, what's happening with you, AG? Hey, man, we hanging in there, man. You know, trying to get through this crisis. How how, how you guys holding it down out there? Oh, man, you know, the crisis is uh, it's, it's a sad thing. You know, it's, it's, it's really sad. It's a pandemic, for real. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, we, we've... Uh, you know, as a solid family, we've been through all this kind of stuff already, you know, mm. uh, and, you know, and, and worse. And, and, you know, we survived. So um, it's just another form of, of surviving. Right. I mean, you, you guys are you guys are quarantined in the in the in the in the gym facility. Am I correct? Is that is that what you guys have going on? Something like that? Oh, yeah. And our gym. um we have a, a, a furnished, finished basement um, to our gym, and we sleep about eight. And uh, we live right here on the premises um, during the quarantine uh, just to train. So, mm. you know, we quarantine in the gym. Wow. That, that's good. So it's good to know you guys are still staying sharp and things like that. Yeah, we haven't missed a day. Wow. We haven't missed a day. Yeah, we when it's the when it, when the uh, smoke clear, we'll be right here, ready to work. Right, as you guys always are, because I mean, you you guys had some pretty big events lined up, you know, starting with um Miss O'Shea Jones, you know, her big Olympic pursuit, you know, she was getting ready to qualify and make it, you know, you got you had all your fighters lined up, I think in one card or uh, Otha Jones, um Charles Conwell and Isaiah Steen, I believe they was all on the same night, right? Oh, yeah, they was going to do, uh, Eddie Hearns bought a slot uh, so Otha could fight um, with his teammates on Showbox, and uh, all three of those guys is going to fight. Uh, the sh I'm, I'm pretty sure Showbox Day will be coming up here real soon, um, maybe July or August, somewhere around there, and uh, we'll be on it, hopefully. Right. If everything works out and, you know, they don't keep uh, shutting everything down. But we're pretty sure that that summer weather will uh, kill that virus and things will be back to normal. Absolutely. And, and I mean, how, how, how did it feel for you? You know, how hard is it to stay focused, you know, with, with such a big event, you know, like the Olympics, you know, getting postponed? is something that you guys pretty much dedicated your whole life to and then, you know, having, having it put postponed. What what did that mean to you? Know how how do you stay focused and stuff like that? You know, I know O'Shea. It was it was pretty mental. You know, um, you know they were training pretty hard. Uh, you know, um, they they started to peak for the tournament, the qualifying tournament. So it was really depressing for her. Um, it was kind of disappointing to me, but you know, whatever it takes to do what. It, if it was two years from now, I mean, it would have been okay. You know, we're going to do whatever it takes to take care of business. There ain't no sense in crying about anything. You know, we got to make it happen and make it work, you know. Right. Two kind of people in this world, those that wait on things that happen and those that make things happen. Mm. That, that, that's definitely that winning mentality that, that you guys, you know, you know, put in, put in your fighters' minds and stuff like that over there. Oh, yeah, you know, and... Going back to the to uh, the COVID nineteen, you know, uh, if you taking if you're healthy and you know you're doing a little bit of exercising, you know you're preparing um, your food correctly. You stand out the restaurants and uh, you know you're eating healthy. Um, you know, when the weather change, you know, you're, you're working your probiotics. You should work that anyway. You should mm. wash your hands anyway. You should, you should, uh, when the weather change, you should keep probiotics in your body. You should do that anyway, whether it's a pandemic or not. You know, that's just the things that you should do. I mean, I mean, if we, if we think about it and we go back to the old school way that our moms used to teach us, like, things like, you know, son, your throat hurt, 
okay, go in there and gargle some salt water. You know, that always worked. Mm-hmm. Um, Mom always smacked you in the head. <laughs> Don't come in my house and eat, uh, reaching in my pots. You ain't even wash your hands. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all those little things that, that mom taught us when we were coming up and young, those was epic. Those are epic for today's time. You know, right. uh, washing your hands, you know, gargling with salt water and, you know, you know, keep my mom used to make us take uh, vitamins and stuff and stuff like that. So uh, all the, the things that, you know, those old school women used to do to uh, keep us, um, germ free and the fight germs and the whatever and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's that. Those are the key factors that saving lives today. Right. I mean, as you, as you guys always say, you know, you guys really do ha- seem to have the cheat code because you know you got the blueprint for for what it takes, you know, to be a a well rounded athlete. You know how you gave your guys the proper rest, the proper nutrition, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. See, you just, you know, we've given you so many interviews, you're just so familiar with how it goes. <laughs> but let me, let me break down what, you, what you're talking about, because people listening probably don't understand. Yeah, we, we talk about, we've talked about in, in prior interviews, you know, how important rest is to an athlete that, that works really hard. Um, we've also talked about and we shared military secrets on um different things to boost your immune system up because we traveled a lot. And, you know, you and I would meet each other in different states and, you know, we would collaborate and say, hey, man, did you take your, say, elderberry, you know, or are you you're good, you know? And so you, you know, right. and these are the things that people should be doing anyway. We, we've been doing this since I've been in the boxing, you know, just, Hey, without a pandemic, I mean, this is just regular for us. So, you know, we 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 were prepared. Yes, sir. And so, even and I have to say, even going to those tournaments and you know, by the way, I got to add that in the last five years, no gym has produced many world champions as us in USA boxing and amateur boxing. Wow. Uh, with with that being said. One of the key factors that's really important is when you fly to these ter- these national tournaments, you're changing your environment, you're changing your element. You know what I mean? You're you're changing. When you fly, you demineralize your body, so your body is so accessible to colds and you know a- a- allergies. If you had to. Uh, allergy that was just you you was kind of allergic and you get there in your immune system then it's going to be worse uh, uh catching a cold it's going to be worse because your immune system if you fly you're going to demineralize your body so you know you, you you're apt to get sick Absolutely. and i gotta say uh eight out of ten times we traveled everybody got sick as, as far as a runny nose or you know caught a cold you know so Going to all these tournaments, we learn what to do. You know, what supplements should we use to prevent us from getting sick? Once we land, what do we need to put back in our body to have our immune system up? We mastered the formula for that. So when everybody was getting sick and they're do the, the guys reaching the, the the finals and they were sick and we both got sick at the same time, we would we would be in great shape because by the five days the whatever virus or whatever cold is gone, you know, it's over with, you know, and we're the strongest the day we first arrived. Wow. That, that, that's, that's the science that I love about this game. That, and, and I thank you for sharing that with us because, you know, especially for the young fighters hearing this, it, it's, it's that game that they really need to soak in, you know? Yeah. And, the, and this, you know, people say, you know, other coaches say, oh, you shouldn't die on other coaches, man. You shouldn't, you know, most of these coaches, and see, this this way, the phrase Roger Mayweather said, most people don't know shit about boxing. <laughs> right. See, it, it, you know, it sounds cruel and everything, but it's so much meaning behind that because they don't. You got all these guys that's been going to these tournaments for six, seven years, never won a national tournament because of, you know, they run into different things and then they don't know how to get out of it. Wow. You know what I mean? That's what makes make 
think make the phrase you don't know shit about boxing. That's that's why. And then you got people that argue till they blue in the face when they really don't know. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, all my fighters in my gym has won a national three, four times. You know, at least three, minimum of three times. Uh, every world tournament. You know, you can only win four. You know, well, you can win more than that if you keep going after you're elite. But, you know, all my kids won junior, youth, elite. You know what I mean? All of them won that. So, you know, all all three years. Wow. Uh, that, that's really elite, man. And, like, if you could, like, summarize really quick or, or you know, in short words, what's, like, the, the key to the success? Like, how, how do you guys get it done? The, the key to the success is what we were just talking about was knowing what to do when you run into those brick walls. Mm. Cause you're going to run into brick walls. You're going to run into, you're going to run into the judge that don't like you. You, right. you know what I mean? You, you're going to run into, uh, um, a cold. Do your coach know how to get, you know, get rid of a cold in, in the, in the fast time? Um, do your co- coach know how to acclimate the fighter once they get, to the spot they're at because most of those nationals is in Colorado, high altitude. Mm -hmm. And that's what throw everybody off. You got kids that have won in the local level, but then they fly out. And by the second round, it's like somebody squeezing your lungs while you're trying to breathe, you know? And if you don't know how to acclimate your body to that, then you're going to lose. Wow, that that's important right there, for real. Because, I mean, I've flown myself to, to, you know, Las Vegas, and you feel the difference once you're in the desert. Your eyes dry up, everything's different. Right, right, exactly. And you got to know how to acclimate yourself. You got to know what supplements to take, what 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 herbal, what herbal, herbals to take, you know, what to do. How, how do you acclimate yourself so you don't get tired? Mm. <clears throat> I had the youngest kid, kid, which is Charles Conwell, you know, qualified for the Olympics. And we went to every high altitude um, uh, state and fought that you could think of. Wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And it just, and we just ran through shit. It just, you know, my guys were in way better shape. My guys didn't get tired. And then when they did get tired, they recovered fast. You know what I mean? So all these are components of knowing what to do, you know? And that's what, you know, of course, you know, I work with Split T, the management company. And and in this position as being a recruiter, I'm the recruiter for the manage, Split T management. Now, that's the biggest part that we worry about. The kid changing from elite to pro. You need help because you don't know. It's, it's, it's just not the same. The same work in elite doesn't work for the pros. Wow. It's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's night and day. And, and people that don't know, and, you know, you got some coaches and dads that argue to their blue in the face. There's no, there's no difference. If, if I can do it in the amateurs, I can do it in the pros. If you don't hook up with a pro coach, and get an understanding coming from elite to pro, then you're going to fail. You got to get an understanding. You got to. You, you can't get away from it. You got to get an understanding. Wow. So, coach, let me ask you: You have such a tremendous knowledge when it comes to this. Who, like, who are some of the guys that you learned from? Like, how, how did you get to that level? Oh man, I put myself around. You know, once. You, you know, you get to winning. Say, you know, you're winning before the shit count. You know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, 13. You know what I mean? Say you win it. When you're at that level, what that should do for you is put you in position to be able to hang with the other guys that's older. The other guys that's older and been doing it a little longer than you so you can hang around those guys and learn, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I put I put myself around, all, even from being in uh, the winner circle, I put myself around all the greats who was willing to help and work with me. Right. Now, I, I've seen you also, you know, a, a pretty impressive athlete. You know, I've seen a picture of yourself uh, 
How, how did that transition from, you know, being in the gym to, to going into the sport of boxing? Were you always involved with boxing or how, how did that come to be? Um, well, I, you know, I boxed young when I was a kid, you know, and, you know, I just didn't feel I had uh, the proper attention from the coaches. You know, I mean, I was a little skinny kid. And I, I didn't, no one thought of me, you know, so... Um, I didn't want to, in the way that those guys taught is you, you get in the ring and learn, Hey, just, you know, fight it out until you keep fighting it out and banging it out so you can understand it. And I wasn't with that, you know, so I went to wrestling practice and, uh, I wrestled and, uh, I became a, a accomplished wrestler. And with that, you know, I kind of kicked all the boxers ass in the neighborhood. <laughs> And this was in Toledo, right? You grew up in Toledo? Yeah, I grew up in Toledo, grew up in Toledo yes. Wow. And I mean, I'm glad you brought up the wrestling because you guys also have a, a deep background in the wrestling system. You know, you, you had your, your son, Roshan Jones, as well. He's one of the great coaches out there. You know, he, he was great at the sport of wrestling, too. Am I correct? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, he was a state uh, winner. He won a state um, in high school. Uh, uh, I trained him. I trained him wrestling. I trained, uh, uh, I started Otha wrestling. And then uh, when Roshan retired, he started training him to wrestle. Wow. So, you know, we come from a, we, we come from a, I can't say a wrestling background, but it's fair to say we come from a combative background. We did it all. You know, when I was, uh, a really little kid, you know, um, I, I, my mentors were guys that was doing karate. You yeah. know what I mean? I would watch these guys kick their teeth out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 you know, I really thought that was fucking cool. You know, watching these guys, you know, chop and, and, and kick their teeth out, you know. And just spit their teeth out and, and just keep going. <laughs> you know, so as a kid, I thought that was, just, you know, that was normal. Right. Do, do you feel that wrestling uh, experience, you know, helps in the sport of boxing? <sighs> um, the way I feel, I don't think you can, uh, you can be complete without it. Wow. Okay. You know, um, wrestling helps with your balance, uh, you know, in boxing, you know, if you was a wrestler, I mean, John Brown, USA Boxing's president and vice president. He 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 had a everybody know he he had a ringside boxing. You know he had ringside boxing. Ringside was the biggest uh, tournament, and you got the most work in the world. Ringside wasn't it wasn't ranked, but it was a big tournament. And in this big tournament. You know, he would give you, because it was expensive, but he would give you a lot of literature as a coach, because he was a coach. And I will never forget, in 2010, I took my son to a tournament, and he had some literature, and the literature said that if you came to his gym and was a wrestler, you would get preferential treatment. I'm like, wow, okay, I feel you, I feel you. Because when I was... When we were taking little O from wrestling to boxing, you know, most people told us, uh, you know, little O can can never be a good boxer because he's a wrestler and you can't make a wrestler a boxer. That's what he told me. I'll never forget. Uh, Jared Anderson's coach, Derry Riley, told me that. He said, wow. he'll never, he'll, he, he was one of the guys who told me that. He said he could never be you know, that kind of fighter because of, you can't change in wrestling to a boxer. And, it, and, you know, and that helped me to this day. I thank him for telling me that because it drove me to prove him wrong. Mm. Because it was wrestling is a form of combat as well as boxing is a form of combat. And at the end of the day, you know, the concept is almost the same. If you're wrestling, the concept is to get behind your, your uh, opponent and, you know, make a scoring blow. Same thing in boxing. 
is to get, you know, to, you know, what they say in boxing. The best punt, the worst punch to get hit with is the one that you don't see coming. Right. So if you cut an angle, if you cut an angle and, and catch this guy with a punch that he didn't see, then most of the angles that, the, that you can't see is what? From behind. You know what I mean? Or almost behind. You know what I mean? Where you can't see it. Where it's the blind spot. Mm-hmm. So it's the, it's the same concept as well. Get in the blind spot and punch your punch your opponent. You know, so you can possibly knock him out. And you know the score. You know the knockdown. Same same difference. Combat is combat in my eyes. So wow. yes, you ask me about wrestling. Does it, yes. Yes, wrestling gives us a good understanding of where my feet should be in the inside when I'm trying to punch. Mm. So yes, wrestling is very uh, important. I I make all my boxers, whether they're wrestlers or not. I make them. I teach them all wrestling. Wow, and I mean my, that my bigger my bigger guys, I get in there and wrestle with them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, hands on with the training <laughs> all, all the time. Whatever I teach, I can show you. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, it, it goes to show, you know, the proof is in the pudding. We see these guys, you know, when they compete, they're, they're just at another level. Oh, yeah, because it's more than it's more than just boxing, you know what I mean? But the basis, basics of the basis of boxing is the basics, you know, and to work off the basics of boxing, it depends on everybody has the basics of boxing. Now, going outside of your boxing basics, is, that's that's your style. That's your strategy. What can you do outside of your boxing uh, basics? Mm. Now, Coach, I, I got to ask you, uh, you know, when boxing does resume, there's a lot of talk, you know, about performing in arenas with no fans and stuff like that. What, what's your take on that? How do you feel about probably having a fight with, with an empty arenas? Hey, well... For the boxers, I think it's, it's uh, oh man, it's so helpful to the boxers because what happens to most of the boxers when they fight? They let the crowd get in their head and they push it too hard or, the, or you know what I mean? The crowd is the factor in a lot of uh, fights, a big factor, you know, the crowd. You know, so um, especially a, a fighter that, that's not seasoned, you know, a, a fighter with under 10 fights, you know, and a fighter that has a lot of fights. The crowd can really, you know, tempt you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. So, you know, in that case, you know, that would help. Um, as far as uh, everything else, you know, the coaches, you know, the, you know, for the promoter, the promoter wouldn't make as much as he normally would make, you know, so... uh but everything is about TV, TV money. You know, I mean, long as the TV is going, you know, the broadcast is going. You know, I think it'd be better for uh, the TV stations to, you know, to be able to sell um, airtime when when people fight more. So I, I think TV would be will, will, will go up. You know, everything is is just about to go virtual. Everything. So. You know, you're going to have to pay to go virtual. Right. So, I mean, and, and once the sport resumes, I mean, can you can you just share a little bit with us, you know, some of your goals? What, what do you have in mind that you want to achieve, you know, short term for, for I guess, for this year? If, if boxing well, this does year, return. Man, this, this year, man, I'm looking for uh, Charles Conwell to get a world championship. Mm. You know, I, I'm looking for Char- Charles Conwell to get a chance to show everybody who he really is you know i think he's the most quiet and best kept secret in boxing right now at 154 for real <laughs> you know how, how, I, I really, how is charles doing can i ask you because you know he, he's he's dealt with a lot and like you said we know he's a good kid so so how's he doing how's he doing mentally and as you know with, with his focus and all that well you know he has a good support system in there and and and, and one of the biggest pieces in the support system is me. You know what I mean? So if, uh, you know, if I've been through a lot and overcame it, you know, I, I'm pretty sure he, he's been around me for uh, over 15 years. So he's seen me overcome things. So I'm sure he will believe in whatever I would tell him. 
And and me, what I would tell him is that you know we got to keep on pushing. We got to get this money. You know, right. he got a he got a kid come on the way. Wow. You know, uh, um, you know, so you know, it, you know, you know, we're from together. We, we're all the way at the bottom. So I mean, there's no way up but up. <laughs> so if if that's what we have to do, then that's what we have to do to come up, and we're destined to come up. Hey, I, I salute and commend you guys for everything you guys are doing because, you know, you do a phenomenal job. And, I mean, it's not just you. It's the whole team that you got going on with, with Split Team Management, everybody at Soul City. You know what I mean? From the amateurs to the pros, you guys really are doing a phenomenal job. Man, I, I thank you, man. I thank you, man. And, you know, as a coach, um, amateur and professional, you know, I have the compassion to want to help everybody, everybody who's willing to listen and learn. You know, I, I have that compassion to do so. You know, I think for real, that's a weakness of mine to want to help others. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, you always get bit in the back or, you know, someone don't appreciate it. But you ain't doing it for that. You doing it because, they, you know, that's the right thing to do. Right. You know, and... And in this, and in recruiting, getting this job, I want to, I want to teach everybody the game. You know, everybody. I think everybody should know the game of boxing to be able to be on the even playing field, because these, these you know, what these guys are selling, it just, it's not good. You know, it, they, you know, they, I, I hate to see a boxer taken advantage of. Right. Because I. I mean, I, I've come, I've grind, I've grinded all the way from the bottom and came up in, as far as, you know, doing good in the amateurs and, and grinding and coming all the way up. I know what it takes. I know what you got to do. I mean, we slept in hotel parking, parking lots and you know, we got one room and had 20 kids and we wow. all use one room to take a shower, all of that, to go through <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. And then somebody takes too much of your money or somebody trick you in a bad deal. Oh, man, that's terrible, man. So, you know, to avoid that, man, I, I just want the world to know you know, the business practices in boxing so they know what they're getting themselves into. Right. It's very important. They, they go with us or they go with anybody else. I ain't going to hate on nobody else. If it's good, if you think it's good for you, then that's that's all that matters. Right. Well, I mean, I feel like they should know by now. I mean, the work speaks for itself and... I mean, it, honestly, I don't feel like it's, at this point it might be their loss if, if you know, they passing on, on such a great exactly. opportunity. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. So, Coach, I mean, before I let you go, we, we know that you guys uh, run a non-profit organization in the gym. You keep a lot of kids off the streets. What can we do if we wanted to help? Where can we reach you guys? How can we contact you? Oh, uh, You can contact us on our website at uh, soulcitygym.com. And it'll direct you to every piece of uh, interest that you have. Okay. That sounds good. Do you want to give any, any other last shout-outs before we let you go? Oh, man, I wish everybody the best. And uh, peace, love, and hard work. All right, Coach. Well, th I thank you once again for your time, you know, for your attention. You've always, you know, like you said, you've helped out from the beginning, you know, even when I was coming up and I was still making my ways, which I still am, you know. You've always been in my corner, and I appreciate you for that. Hey, man, real recognize real, man. And, you know, in life, when you run across people who's real and, and, and who's really real, and through time you find out, you got to cherish that, so... I cherish our friendship, AG. Thank you. I appreciate you. Amen, Coach. You have a blessed night and, you know, keep up the great work. We we look forward to seeing you guys back in action. Back at you, man. Me too. Peace, champ. Peace.